In exercise 2.9, we prepared journal entries and then posted those journal entries to our T account. Now, in exercise 2.10, we're going to move on and prepare a trial balance. One item that I'll note in the instructions is they've indicated we weren't given a date in 2.9. They've indicated that our date's going to be as of May 31st. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, we've already done most of the work in exercise 2.9 again. We prepared the journal entries, we posted the journal entries, so we have our T account balances. So it should be much easier from here. One thing that I will note is if you're working the static version of exercise 2.9 and 2.10, you can use those same T account balances. If you happen to be working the algorithmic versions, which mean you're going to get completely different numbers between 2.9 and 2.10, the good news is the journal entry that counts themselves and the journal entries are going to be the same, but your dollar amounts are going to vary slightly. So if you are working that algorithmic version, go back to 2.9, just adjust your dollar amounts to get the correct um, balances now for 2.10. So just wanted to go ahead and give you that tip before we jump in. Now, speaking of the trial balance, at the end of each step of the accounting cycle, we prepare a trial balance. Simply stated, a trial balance just lists all of the accounts in the general ledger and their related balances, and it simply proves out whether the accounts are in balance. And what I mean by that is that the total of our debit account balances must equal the total of all our credit account balances. If it does, it proves out our double entry system and the accounting equation in general, and that's what we need. If it's not the case and our total debit account balances don't equal our total credit account balances, we've made an error somewhere. Can't tell you exactly where and once we finish off I'll give you some hints, but we've made an error somewhere we needed to do some backtracking. I'll also note that unlike the financial statements, the trial balance is an internal document. Things like our income statement balance sheet, those are external, but our trial balance is just for internal purposes before we move on to our financial statements to make sure total debits equal total credits. I like to think of the term trial balance. There's two words in there. One's trial means we're testing things out and balance means we're trying to figure out whether total debits equal total credits. That's where I think it got its name from. So starting out with this internal document, it's always important to list the company name first. Remember we're doing spade company. The second part is you want to list the report name and that's going to be trial balance. The third important item is listing the date and sometimes these are little things that I find that sometimes people forget when they're entering and connect to put this information in. It's important to indicate the date. This is being prepared as of May 31st. They don't give us the year but at least we know it's the last day of May. Then we've just got simply the titles that we're going to list the account titles one by one all the way to the left. Here in our middle column is going to be our debit balances and here all the way on the right is going to be our credit balances. And all we simply do is go account by account. For example, we'll start out with our cash account here and list its ending balance for this particular period in the correct column depending upon whether it's a debit balance or credit balance. Our cash account is an asset. It's got a debit balance here on the left of 3550 so we're going to enter that here. Then we're going to go account by account. And usually we start out with our assets first. Accounts receivable has a debit balance of $1,300. Office supply, another asset, has a debit balance of $300. Office equipment, again, the balance is on the left and it's an asset, so it's normal balance is going to be a debit balance on the left, is going to be $6,200. So we finished off all our assets. Then usually our liabilities come next, which we have accounts payable next. It happens to be, if you remember, while we bought an item and had an IOU, we later paid that off, so we don't owe our vendors or suppliers anything currently, so the balance is going to be zero, and we'll go ahead and just enter a line here to indicate that it has a zero balance. Our next item is typically going to be our equity account, so we've got common stock. The balance is here on the right. Remember, it's an equity account, so it has a normal credit balance, so we'll enter it here on our right also of $11,250. 
Our next item is typically going to be dividends. It has a balance on the left, which means that's a debit balance. Remember, even though dividends is equity, it's normal the opposite equity rule. So it's going to have a normal debit balance of $3,000 here. Then we're going to move on to the revenues. The only revenue account that this company has is fees earned. It has a balance on the right indicating it's a credit balance. That makes sense since it's a revenue account and follows the normal equity rules. So we'll enter a credit balance of 3,600. And last and not least is gonna be our expenses. This company only happens to have one. Remember that expenses have a normal debit balance, even though they're equity accounts, they remove equity from the company. So they're gonna follow opposite the normal rules. So we're gonna list this left hand or debit balance down here of 500. Once we get all the account titles and their balances, their end of period balances entered in the appropriate debit or credit columns, then we're gonna total each of the debit and credit columns. So I'm totaling these up. Our debits add up to $14,850. So just the addition of 3,550, 1,300, 300, 6,200, 3,000, and 500 equals 14,850. Let's cross our fingers that our credits equal the same. If we add up 11,250 plus 3,600 of revenues, we also get 14,850. So good news is we proved out debits equal credits. It appears like we've been doing our dual system correctly and our accounting equation is going to be in balance. If these had not been equal, you have to do a bit of work, investigation to figure out what happened. It could be as simple. The first place I'd recommend starting is just retotal the columns. How easy it is it to just simply transpose a number, or forget a number when you're adding up. If that doesn't seem to correct the problem, then you're going to have to do a little bit of backtracking. First, you basically go opposite the direction you first went with your transactions. Remember you started out with journal entries, then the general ledger, then the trial balance. Now we're going to go backwards. See if we can find the error in the trial balance itself. If we can't backtrack to the general ledger, see whether or not maybe just accidentally with fees earned instead of taking the number over as a credit balance of 3600, maybe you accidentally entered it in the debit balance column. Maybe on the other hand, you accidentally transpose the number. Instead of 3,600, you entered 6,300 and just did an oops there. Those are simple things to do. If that doesn't seem to correct it, look at the account balances themselves in the general ledger. Maybe perhaps you just added up an account balance wrong. Hopefully by that point, you found your error. If not, you're going to keep chugging along and you're going to go back to the journal. Remember, that's the first point at which transactions were recorded. You're going to see maybe perhaps when you're posting an entry from the journal to the ledger, maybe perhaps you had an error in that posting. You didn't record it correctly in the general ledger. On the other hand, maybe you were missing one side of a journal entry, or maybe you had your journal entry was in balance. One side's $10,000, another side's $1,000. So you have to keep working at it to find where your error stems from. Now, the good news is we happen to balance. Now, good news, bad news, and we've got our trial balance here. We balance. Does that mean we did everything correct? Well, I'd like to say we did everything correct, but really all this proves out is total debits equal total credits. That's still important because we wouldn't want to move on to our next steps of adjusting our accounts and doing our financial statements if that wasn't true. There'd be no purpose in it. But the bad news is it doesn't necessarily mean you've done everything correct. So let me point out some errors that could have happened. There could be a classification wrong. What this means is the trial balance doesn't necessarily mean that every single transaction, do we analyze it correctly and record it in the correct counts? So think about this. What if we had a transaction where we paid for six months of insurance right away? Well, yeah, I, I know credit cash, but the debit side of the transaction paid for six months of insurance. What if we accidentally debited insurance expense instead of prepaid insurance? we still would have a debit and a credit 
And if we did the dollar amounts the same, it would still balance out, but our trial balance wouldn't determine that we really should have debited an asset versus an expense. So it can't catch those types of problems. Also, it can't catch recognition problems. What I mean by that is it's not necessarily going to determine that maybe you accidentally recorded a journal entry twice. Or on the other hand, maybe you forgot to record a journal entry. As long as you did both sides or you missed both sides, even if you missed it completely or duplicated it or did it triple times, it's not going to be able to determine that. Also, a valuation issue. If you made an error in the debit and credit by the same amount, it's not going to be able to determine that. So say you sold uh, maybe some goods for $1,000. You're supposed to debit accounts receivable for $1,000 and credit accounts, or excuse me, sales for $1,000. Maybe instead of $1,000, both the debit and the credit you recorded for $100. Again, the error is the same in both accounts and your trial balance is not going to determine that. Now again, it can't catch all of those errors, but at least you get some sense of whether total debits equal total credits of even to attempt to move on to the next steps.